this morning. We have a jam-packed program lined up for you today. We will be having two young people who are members of the Early Teens and Deviate Youth Group who will be joining us today to discuss issues that are relevant to them in their lives. Our first guest is Timmy. Timmy is a 15-year-old student at Kingsway College. She enjoys debating and running in her spare time, and she aspires to be either an occupational therapist or a pediatrician. Our second guest is Lisette. Lisette is a 15-year-old student at Bishop Ryan High School. She enjoys so many things, including sketching. She aspires to be a teacher. Please welcome Lisette. Thanks for joining us here today. Please have a seat. Timmy, let's start with you. I see that you enjoy debating and running. Please tell us more. Oh, yes. Okay, so debating, like, um, I am a fairly shy person, but once I get comfortable with you, um, I'll be arguing with you all the time. So uh, I just like having, like, something to stand up for and, like, giving you evidence as to why, like, I'm right and you're wrong. And running, <laughs> and running it's just, like, you know, it's a good exercise. You get cardio, and it's just fun for me to do, yes. Lisa, I see that you enjoy sketching. Please tell us more. So, like, yes, I love sketching, and there's so many parts I like doing, but I'm more into the human body, so I'll be drawing people. So, yeah. Now that we have a better idea of who you are, do you also identify as Christians? I do identify as a Christian. I was born um, and raised in a Seventh-day Adventist family. Yes. I was also born in a Seventh-day Adventist family, and... I do identify as myself as a Christian. There has been a lot of talk about what it means to be a Christian in the past two weeks. But today I would like to touch on one important component, standing up for God, even during temptation. In your opinion, what is temptation? Um, Lisa, you can start. Um, temptation, it's like that feeling that you... Like, you need to do something. It can either be bad or good. So you can either say yes or no to it. Um, I think a temptation is something that you want to do and you probably shouldn't do. Or it could just be something that you want to do and you just can't do at that moment in time. How often do you think people get tempted? I think people get tempted, like, all the time. Just regularly, like, I am very much tempted to fall asleep right now, but I cannot do that because I am on stage. So, yeah, I do think people are tempted, like, quite regularly. Um, uh, temptation, you know, she actually gave me my answer. <laughs> Sorry. Do you only... Do only bad people get te tempted? No, <laughs> no. Um, good people also get tempted, like even Jesus got tempted. And uh, as we all know, and for the ones that don't, uh, Jesus said no. So, yeah, even good people do. Yeah, and going back to my example I gave a few seconds ago, I am tempted to fall asleep. So it's not just bad people who get tempted. Good people get tempted as well. For someone who doesn't know what temptation is, can you give a personal example? Jimmy, you start. <laughs> so, temptation, ah. Oh. Okay, so temptation is, like I said, you know, I'm tempted to fall asleep, but how can I give this a personal example? Okay, so let's say my mom has a jar of cookies on the counter. I want to take the cookies out of the jar, but mom said I can't have cookies before dinner. So it's kind of like I want to take the cookies out of the jar, but I shouldn't because I'm going to get in trouble. So yeah. Kind of similar, but I'm not into cookies, so 
It's more about presents. Like, I know my mom got me something for presents, and, uh, and she's like, you cannot open it yet. So I'm like, oh, I want to know what she got me. So I want to open it or not. So it's either you can open it and get punished, or you can wait and get the present. So when you say, like, presents, do you mean, like, a Christmas gift when you go down before everyone and open your stocking and then shove everything back in? Yeah. <laughs> okay. What does standing up for God during temptation look or mean to you? I think that looks like, you know, standing up against the norm, let's say, you know, just a bunch of your friends. Uh, they decide to go bully this one kid and probably shouldn't be doing that, you know, and standing up for that kid is going against the norm and that's similar to just temptation, you know, just going against the temptation and prevailing through it, yes. Um, like when you stand up to God, it, the one thing that comes to our mind is judgment. Like, will I be judged? So it really is kind of sometimes hard to stand up for God, especially when there's temptation in there. Is it sometimes hard to stand up for God? Um, yeah, it can be hard. It depends on who you are, really. Like if you're a person who likes to be in their comfort bubble, it's definitely going to be hard for you to stand up for things in general and for God. But for other people, like, it's easier for them. They're just more confident in their religion and their Christianity and stuff. Like I said about the judgment thing, uh, you can always be going through what could go wrong of when you, like, stand up for God. But there are some good things that... What are some challenges with standing up for God? Um, there's so many things that you can, that can happen to you for standing up for God. Like one, you can lose friends. Uh, two, uh, you can be called weird or looked down. But the biggest one to us is like, standing up to God is like, you know how the cookie jar says like, uh, you're just standing up to God even to Satan sometimes. So you look, Satan could say, take the cookie. And, and God says, don't take the cookie. And you can stand to God and say, yeah, I won't take the cookie. Um, there's also uh, being judged by both just people in general, like whether those be Christians or non-Christians. Like being, um, some Christians aren't exactly Christians. And so you'll do things that, you know, Christians should do. And those Christians will be like, hmm, I don't know how I feel about that. And so, yeah, it's just being judged by people. Is it, worth to, is it worth it to stand up for God? I think for me it'd be worth it because then I feel really good after. Just like, I feel good for standing up for what I believe in. Um, I mean, like you have like that little, like after you stand up to God, you have like that little like feeling, that nice little feeling that makes you want to do the happy dance. That like, yeah, I've done it. I stand up to God. So it makes you feel good. When you say the feeling is amazing, can you describe that feeling to us? Well, okay, I can. Um, so this week, uh, I decided to come out of my comfort zone and talk to people. I don't do talking, it's a little too much work for me. But I decided to talk to people and I felt really good. Like I had a really good Monday and this entire week has been really good for me. And it's just like socializing and yeah, it's like a good feeling inside, like it's an adrenaline rush and it's, you feel great, it's that kind of feeling. Has, has standing up for God worked out for your benefits? Okay, for this question, I have a little story. Um, my mom and dad know this story because my mom was brought to the principal in grade two. So I was in a public school, and uh, the one thing that we weren't really supposed to do was supposed to talk about a religion. And uh, one day we were learning about we were learning science, and that day we were learning how the soil and the ground and was made. And the teacher was talking about revolution, how it just happened to be there. And I did not like that. I really did not. And I stood up and said, yeah, no, that, that, that didn't happen. God made the soil. 
And then the teacher told me, he's like, Lisette, we're just learning about this. You do not know this. You're just in grade two. And God did not make the soil. It was evolution. So, so then I kept fighting back to my teacher. And then all of a sudden, these, these friends of mine, um, they kind of had the same concept to what my religion is. But they did believe that God created the earth. So they said, yeah, it's true. Uh, God made the soil, and a friend of mine joked around, like, they just fell out of the ground then if it, God didn't make it. So, so I believe that God stood up for me by bringing my friends to stand up with me. Does it make it easier to stand up for God because he did it first? I think it does. You know, it's kind of like a relationship with your friend. Like, your friend stands up for you. You feel touched. You're like, oh, my goodness, they, they stood up for me. And so then when your friend's in trouble, you want to go stand up for them. It's like that kind of relationship. So God stands up for you, and you stand up for him. And it feels good. For me, it's kind of different because whenever I have to stand up for God, I find it it's a new challenge. So one day it could, one day it could be against my friend. I have to stand up to God against my friend. The next day will be my class or it will be the world. So for me, it's really not that easy. Great perspective. Do you have any advice for young people your age stand about standing up for God? I feel like standing up for God doesn't have to be anything extravagant. You know, like in the Bible, it's like, oh my goodness, you know. Moses stood up against the Israelites and he stayed with God and stuff like that. It doesn't have to be big stuff, it's just small stuff like um, helping someone. I don't know. It, just, it doesn't have to be anything super big, super extravagant, just small things that you do that matter when it comes to standing up for God. Um, the only advice I can say is pray a lot if you really need the help and just think what would Jesus do like would Jesus do this if he do, will then do it if he won't don't do it but I don't I don't mean like when you're angry and you really want to strangle someone don't say would Jesus do this and you're like yeah he would and go for it and don't don't do that <laughs> be 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 honest about what would Jesus would do well thanks for joining us here today please stay tuned for future programs Good morning, church. Oh, that was loud. Um, my name is Shiji Latunde, and today I'm going to be talking to you about the Stan. In my life, I've constantly felt left out in some situations. I felt this way because my belief as a Christian would lead me in such a way that I wouldn't be able to do certain things. So because I didn't want to be left out, I would do those things. I remember when I was around the age of five or six, I was at a party at my cousin's house. And at that party, there was pepperoni pizza. So as we know, or as we believe, um, what is pork? Is pork clean or unclean? So my cousin's parents, they believe that pork isn't unclean at all, while my family did not believe in eating pork. I knew I wasn't allowed. But when I saw others eating and enjoying, I ate. They all told me it was fine to eat, so I did. In this story, what did I do wrong? Pardon? Okay. Please turn your Bibles to Ephesians 6, verse 1 to 3. I'll give you a little time. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. So already in the first verse, I did something wrong. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may go well with you and you may enjoy a long life on earth. So even though we may be considered uncool or boring, we should always follow our parents' ways. Good, godly parents would want the best for you. In my case, nothing bad happened, but in other situations, it could be very dire. So just listen to your parents. 
Your friends are just as young and experienced as you. So listen to your parents. Does anyone know what Roblox is? Raise your hands if you know what Roblox is. So we have a lot of Roblox players here. <laughs> if you want to play Roblox with me, my name's Defective Ash underscore one, two, three, four. <laughs> this game, Roblox, is a game that I played with many Catholic, Pentecostal, and even non-religious people. But because they played on the Sabbath, or my Sabbath, I played on the Sabbath. I was scared to tell them and seem uncool or weird in their eyes, so I never talked about it. In this story, what did I do wrong? Yeah, I played Roblox on the Sabbath. Now, what does the Bible have to say about this? Please turn your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 5. And verse 1 reads, Follow God's example. Therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But among you, there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or any kind of impurity, greed, or greed, because these are the improper things for God's holy people. Nor should there be any obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. The second verse I want you to go to is Exodus 20, verse 8 to 11. And it reads, Remember, the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son, daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the seventh day and made it holy. God's day is holy, and because of that, it should be treated in that manner. If we respect God and want to follow his way, we should learn to follow his way fully, which will take sacrifice. True friends will accept you for who you are, while fake friends will leave you by the wayside. Friends shouldn't be your main priority. God should. By playing with the people on Roblox, I chose to sit instead of stand for God. I should have been honest about what I believed, and I shouldn't have been ashamed of it. But even though we've gone past my mistakes of eating pepperoni pizza or playing Roblox on the Sabbath, why was it so hard for me to, to do it? And by do it, I mean, why was it so hard to stand out? And why is it so hard to stand out? Any responses? Yeah, temptation. Pardon? Yeah, we care about what people think of us. Judgment. It's easier to go with the crowd, exactly. I think in Ephesians 3, verse 16 to 19, I think we have the solution to our problem. Um, I'll give you some time to just go to the... Ephesians 3, verse 16 to 19. 16 reads... I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with the power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide, long, high, and deep is the love of Christ, and to know that this love is, surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. This verse tells us that in order to stand for God, verse 17, we need Christ to dwell in our hearts. So how does Christ dwell in our hearts? What do we need to do to get Christ to dwell in our hearts? Yeah. 
Any responses? Pray, okay. Seek the Holy Spirit and invite him in. So I think, would we all agree that the way to do this is to have a relationship with him? Studying the Bible and really trying to understand what God is telling you. Praying earnestly to God and confessing all your sins to him and applying what you learn. I think this is how we get Christ to dwell in our hearts. Only God and only God can help us stand for him. We can do nothing on our own. So from all this, we know that God is our only example. We should be following, not our friends, elders, or pastors. We should not be afraid to live according to our beliefs. So in our lives today, don't be afraid to be different. Embrace it. Do not be shaped by the opinions of others. We need to rise, gladly showing people what we stand for. This can also relate to sharing the gospel. As a church, we need to show Jesus through our actions and words, bringing the gospel to life. Every decision we make will either be for the world or for God. Colossians 3.23 reads, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as if working for the Lord, not human masters. Now, this is a podium, right? So for a podium, you would advocate, for example. So what does it mean to advocate? Yeah, you can defend. Mm -hmm. So I leave you with two podiums, the heavenly or earthly podium. But the question is, who will you stand for? And who will you be against? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing this word to us today. Thank you for blessing us with the ability to be here on this Sabbath day. Lord, help us to be able to stand for you. Help us to be able to have a better relationship with you. And help us to be rooted and grounded in Christ. Bless us now. In your name I pray. Amen. Stand. So I've always heard it, and if I've heard it, so might have you. Stand. Stand for holiness. Stand for righteousness. Not just stand, but stand firm. As young people, we are told to stand. 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 Just maybe. Maybe you're different, but then again, maybe you're not. If that's the case, You've got questions, questions, questions. What does it mean to stand? Why do I stand? How do I need to stand? Where do I need to stand? Let me break this down for you. The what, the why, the how, the where. What? Glad you asked. What does it mean to stand? As the good English Oxford, it is to maintain an upright position to be supported by one's feet. A position taken, a decision made. Okay, that was English. Let's speak Greek. Histomy means to continue safe, to endure, to persist, to stand ready or prepared, to be of steadfast mind, of quality, does not hesitate, does not waver. Why? Really? You're asking? Why do we need to stand? If I can remember clearly, last I've heard that we identify as children of God, chosen people, royal priesthood, holy nation, God's special use. Our role is to clear the praises to him who called us out of darkness into the wonderful light. How? Hmm. How are we to stand? Let's check our manual. Yes, the holy book, that is right. Like a true soldier, put on the full armor of God so that you'll be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. We are reminded to be alert, stand. Not just stand, but stand firm in faith. Where, finally, at 
thought you'd never ask. Where do we need to stand? Friends to stand and to remain standing, we need to stand on the rock, the all-time solid rock. I can't say this enough. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my savior. My God is my rock, in whom I find protection. He is my shield, the power that saves me, and the power and the place of my safety. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord, the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the hurt, he will not grow tired or weary. He has understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increase the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who put their hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary, and they will walk and not faint. As a youth, I am called upon to be strong, and I'm empowered by the Almighty One. I will have no fear on missing out, but by His power will I strive to stand out, will boldly identify as a child of the Most High. I will stand. Will you stand?